Our first relation to others are within the family. It is relationship as an infant and then as a child with parents and siblings. This is our human foundation. Mary has a baby. It is wonderful in one sense. In another, it is nothing but burden. The new person that has grown within her has separated and has become an individual person. It is also a person who does nothing on his or her own but demand. It is a person who can do nothing for him or herself beyond basic body functions. In many ways, mother and baby is a trust relationship. Human life as a separate being begins with a newborn who can do nothing, a parent as an adult who is entrusted to see to the needs and wants of a baby provides for both its life and its welfare. Every growing young human learns one lesson after another and soaks up knowledge of their environment. And with each new lesson on how to do things for him or herself, the child learns to take part in his or her own life and welfare. It is the corresponding role of the parent to support that learning and to support the child who learns to feed him or herself. Parents usually thrill to the witness that a child is learning to walk so that they do not have to carry him or her everywhere else. That thrill they see when their child play with safe objects, watching the child learn to manipulate things with fingers and hands. Growing up does not reach pause points and neither does the role of a parent cease. It also changes and grows to address new sets of wants and needs as the youngster grows. The young child learns to survive and prosper in the presence of others, both strangers and peers. The child learns that siblings share many things with him or her, as do other young children. They learn to sort this out, and parents watch as they take in their early social lessons. With continued growth, they reach a point where they can accept factual understandings and this is where we have positioned public education, providing the classroom environment to be something akin to a family, and later morphing into a purpose-based grouping of others most like themselves in age and maturity. It is the human family that ha is the same for all students. It is every child's need for parenting. This has provided that most wonderful and effective foundation that we generally term trust. There is an incredible personal value for every human being in being able to trust those around them. Formal education, with the help of its non-family experts, is available for children who reach an appropriate mental and physical maturity, almost always at around age five. It is then that the intellectual lessons can begin in earnest. Still, the foundation is family and it is a source for the trust that the student puts into the teacher as an adult tasked with the welfare of children. It is that trust that makes education possible, and it is human for a younger child to trust an adult in the school environment. There is a different level of trust between the parent and classroom teacher. It is still trust based on a shared purpose in caring for and promoting the future of a child. The most important differences are in the educational lessons received by the teacher and corporate constraints placed upon the teacher. These are constraints as to the lessons presented and constraints as to the corporate class management behaviors. It is here that students are ranked for punishment and reward against other children, which no parent would ever do to their own children. It is here that knowing something is presented as more valuable than what you might be able to do with that knowledge. It is here that authority of the school is promoted at the expense of parental authority. It would be wrong to blame this on teachers. It is the corporate system in which they are required to function. They are human beings and largely past and present parents to their own children. Even as parents, teachers have been educated within the system we have. It is education on what they must do to succeed within it as teachers. They do what they have learned and the system rewards them. If they do something else, they face censure. On going to modern schools, learning, which took the child from a helpless and isolated being at birth to a walking, talking, and moderately self-sufficient part of a family, slows to a crawl. It switches from what the child can do to what they should do, and from learning how to be effective to learning what every child should know. This is where we pick up the study of performance. 
teenage students coming to intellectual awareness that they are the only real party in interest. It is as early teenagers that the student realizes they are not just passive receivers at the end of an educational pipeline. They have a purpose, and their purpose is the purpose of education.